gentlemen, the gentleman I'm about to bring up. What? Won an Emmy Award for his writing and performance on the TV what? show the SFO. You've seen him at Comedy Central. What? What? The Underground, the Chris Rock Show. Look at the Paul O'Brien. Ladies and gentlemen, what? please welcome the world's only hit by the medium, James Weston Jackson. Here he is. Thank you, thank you. Is it dark in here or is it just me? <laughs> Do you know that we see ourselves and others? That's why we smile when we see ugly people. <laughs> Do you know that one out of every four people in here is ugly? Now you think of three of your friends. <laughs> And if they look okay, <laughs> during the Jewish holidays, I like to go into supermarkets and put hands in Jewish people's baskets. <laughs> and it's really great to be here tonight, and it's really great that you're here, because last week you did a show, a room full of Jehovah Witnesses. And all they wanted to hear was knock-knock jokes. <laughs> it's great, folks, and it's really great to laugh. And see, I'm not a comedian. I'm an environmedian. Environmedian means uncomedian. It takes the worry out of being funny. <laughs> see? <laughs> If I were a comedian and the mood was like this, I would panic. But as an environmedian, this is exactly what's going on. There's no pressure. When you're not laughing, your unconscious is cracking up. So you can sit here like this and be hysterically entertained. It's right brain humor. Tomorrow night you'll wake up after deep sleep and say, damn, you know, that was funny. <laughs> You ever see people laugh? There's no sound, it's just... The sound comes near the end of the laugh. And then animals come around to see what's happening. You ever laugh so much you begin to feel oriental? You teach get tired. When you get home, you say, don't bother me for a minute. I just want to rest my jaw. You ever do that laugh and then accidentally fart? It's a lot of stress, doesn't it? And you always throw in an extra laugh because it scares you. And people sitting next to you sit there and act as if you didn't do anything. I think they'd be mad. Because the moment you look away, they give you space. That's why farts smell. It gives deaf people something to do. <laughs> it's so healthy to laugh, too. You know, when you laugh, you trigger endorphins, which is the body's natural painkiller. It's right there next to morphine. Folks, this is the last legal high. <laughs> you also trigger endorphins when you jog. Anybody in here jog? You ever notice how good you feel when you stop running? <laughs> That's why I don't jog. I like to get behind joggers in my car. I like to help them out. I like to drive the speed I think they ought to run. Of course, they don't see the humor in it. Because they're too involved. Good gut laughter is so good for you psychologically, therapeutically. It stimulates the cardiovascular. Plus, it tightens up your dookie. <laughs> Very important. How often hear people say, hey, but it's your shit together. <laughs> so if you know anybody with diarrhea or loose dookie, tell them to come on down to the comedy room and tighten up their dookie. <laughs> Some people are saying, what's Dookie? It's a cultural exchange. 
They're going to do a sequel of Rooks and Shogun and call it Shona. <laughs> See, there are three things that you cannot ignore. When it happens to you, you're totally involved. It's a peak experience. It's laughter, an orgasm, and a sneeze. Not necessarily in that order. <laughs> Have you noticed some people use a Kleenex for each one? <laughs> Work it out. I hear somebody telling them some dookie right now. Take care of your body and it will last as long as you do. I went to my doctor and he told me I needed more roughage. So this nurse locked me in the room and beat the shit out of me. I'm going back next week. While I was there, it's an older couple there, and the guy was hard of hearing, and, and the doctor said, I'm going to need a small sample of urine, a small sample of stool, a small sample of semen. And the guy said, what did he say? What did he say? And his wife said, the doctor wants to see your shorts. <laughs> I see somebody explaining it. Yeah, I like to go out to airports and have Kunte Kinte Page. <laughs> Kunte Kinte, Kunte Kinte. To the white courtesy telephone, please. <laughs> Next time you ride an airplane, the flight attendant tell you to turn your seat upright. Stand on your head. <laughs> I like to go into bathrooms on airplanes and leave the vacancy sign up. You meet a lot of nice people like that. <laughs> Don't you get intimidated when you call to some place and they tell you to hold and there's music in your ear? When they come back, I've forgotten why I called. I say, hey, let me hear the rest of that Johnny Mathis album. I hear somebody turning up some doobie. It is, folks. It's really great, you know? One of my favorite things to do is get a clipboard to stand in the mall and watch people avoid me. <laughs> You ever be talking to somebody and spit plops them out and hit them on the cheek? And it just dangles. You can't remember what you're trying to say because your eyes keep going back to that spot on their cheek. You ever open somebody's brand new car door and it scrapes the sidewalk? And you lift the whole car with one arm. And they'll say, it's okay, but you know they're lying. Scrape my door. What are panty shields? <laughs> Any ladies you have on panty shields? Are you having trouble with radiation down there? <laughs> Fall out? <laughs> you ever get the adhesive side up? <laughs> It sounds like Velcro. <laughs> I guess I'll just keep asking until I find out. <laughs> it's just great just being that happy, you know? Stress it. just wiping us out. Stress takes us off, you know? This is the first time in the history of this room that this moment has ever appeared. There it goes. <laughs> we can't ever do that again. Do you know that in here right now nobody can see their ears? You can tell the intellectuals, they're doing this. <laughs> Some people are kind of high, so they're trying to jerk their head around. <laughs> you can't move your head around that fast. Even if you hold them, you can't see them. Unless you're President Obama. <laughs> Your face is cool, it's just sitting there on your face. What if you didn't know it, but there was a booger hanging from your nose? Oh. Notice the urge, you want to check it out? Why do we let boogers control us? There's nothing wrong with them. Boogers are nature's way of not letting your head rot off. And you don't have to be in your car to dig in your nose. Some people think that's what the car is for. 
I said, hey, I think I got to dig in my nose. I guess I'll go out and get in the car. And that's where we see them at. What is it about a car that makes us think that folks can't see us in there digging in our nose? Some people pay $500 for tinted windows so they can dig in privacy. So next time you see one of those long limousines, there's a marathon going on. There. And if you're like me, which most of you are not, the police like to pull up beside me and look over at me. I don't know why, so I just get off into my nose. And they leave me alone because they know if they write me a ticket, I got to use their pen. <laughs> what you gonna do when they come for you? You find a way. I got stopped the other night by dyslexic police. You know he gave me an IUD? <laughs> When I came into the world, my fist was balled up just like that. And the doctor's prized his fingers open, and sure enough, there was the pill. I wasn't letting that pill keep me from coming here. I knew my mother didn't want me when she put a live teddy bear in the crib with me. Just to give you a little bit on my background, <laughs> Greenwood, Mississippi, where I'm originally from, it's a very small town, the zip code's a decimal. The main street runs right through the car wash. It's the actual size on the map. We had one yellow page. There were no white pages. Do you know that I had an uncle who was the first black man to be baptized in an all-white church? You know they held him under for 30 minutes? <laughs> Tell me, do you believe? I'm an atheist, thank God. <laughs> That's right, folks. Enjoy good laughter. It is so healthy. It is so healthy for you, really. And you know what? When you're laughing, if you think of something that you want, you can get it. Simply because you're in the high mind, you're laughing and having a good time, and you're healing. Isn't that wonderful? You can heal just from laughter. Oh, that's terrific. Yeah. It really is. And there's no tax on it yet. <laughs> That's right, man. I go to mass every morning, and there's a little old lady who sits in the front, and she's with her husband. She has, she's pristine, and she has little blue hair. And she leaned up to her husband the other morning and says, Honey, I don't know what to do. I think I just let go of a silent one. <laughs> what should I do? What should I do? He says, When you get home, you're going to go upstairs and look in the drawer and get a battery for your hearing aid. <laughs> I'd like to get everybody's name and address so I can come on your job sometimes and say hello. <laughs> no, it's just great. It really is, man. I was sitting at home one day. I wasn't thinking about anything. I said, hey, I can share this with the audience. <laughs> so I brought it with me. These are unthoughts. Unthoughts are things that go on in your imagination. It ain't much happening, is it? <laughs> she looked around, thought it's like here, something else going on. <laughs> That's somebody in here that crazy glued peanuts to their windowsills <laughs> and watched pigeons go neurotic trying to pick them off. <laughs> That's me writing Preparation H a letter and telling them what I think you ought to do with their product. <laughs> You know, that's not funny to everyone. <laughs> that's
that sociologist telling us that children are hereditary? <laughs> Which is the same as saying if your grandparents never had any kids, chances are you won't have any either. <laughs> It's a great new way of getting rid of ring around the collar. It's called wash around the neck. <laughs> Let's see Italian people getting together with the Japanese people coming up with a new car called Dots are Nice. <laughs> That's two dogs doing it people style. <laughs> That's everybody in here trying to picture that. <laughs> That's me putting a little cologne on my income tax return. <laughs> because of what they do to me, I want them to be in the mood. <laughs> It's a horse with a van painted on it. <laughs> Does it take my horse long to get to some place? <laughs> That's Delta Airlines changing their slogan to appeal to more minorities. They're changing their slogan from Delta's ready when you are to Delta be ready when you is. <laughs> There we are finding out that our 7-Elevens in the Middle East are run by people from Cleveland. <laughs> there we are finding out that in Poland they tell a 